Have you had the chance as a seamstress to make your perfect little black dress? I have made a few, but I have to say this one is my favorite. I have used a chiffon with velvety dots. I've also made another one using actually a blouse pattern by Rick 6684. Lots of sewing to see, so keep watching. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing If you're always stopping by, welcome back And if you're just new to this channel and stumbled upon this sewing video Go ahead and watch, you will see that there's a lot of practical sewing here for you to see And maybe apply it to something similar you're making at home so if you think that's a cool idea, go ahead and subscribe and tap on the bell. Before I get started with all the sewing I want to share with you, I just wanted to send you some messages of support. I know a lot of us all around the world are taking different precautions depending on what our governments are recommending us to do. A lot of us are actually in lockdown. Um, we can't go out and be with other people and it can be super isolating. It's just the three of us here. My son's home from school. He's not going there, although he will be studying on this online platform. They're setting up very quickly, I must add. And my husband too, he's been doing all his work online at the moment. In my case, what I do, uh, in my case, what I do in this platform and on my website is also done online. So although I can continue with my activities, I am still very worried and very concerned about the situation of everyone else. Um, please look after yourself. Please stay at home if you can. Please don't go out if you don't absolutely have to, to get something essential. You know, it is serious. It's becoming serious very, very fast in a lot of countries. And there's cases everywhere. You know, there's cases just two hours from here. Many, many, many cases. So. Please look after yourself. The pattern I want to talk to you about is by Rick 6684. This is a newish pattern. It wasn't released too long ago. It is still in print. I bought it as a PDF format. Um, I have found that option now and I'm really, really picking the ones I want to purchase, probably one per month. And usually ones that have details that I can't find with other patterns that I already own or that I can see in some indie brands. Butterick 6684 has four views there. Essentially two views with some little extra bonuses. Designed to be made with woven fabrics, light to medium weight woven fabrics. The main difference with these is the neckline. So views A and B have like a deeper V neckline. They have a necktie coming from the neckline that stops around here on the upper chest and then the bow or the tie is done low, lower, sort of where the v-neckline falls. And you know, view A has just the drop shoulder and view B has a flounce added to that drop shoulder. Now, whenever I see these designs have flounces around the upper body, like on sleeves or on necklines, my brain shuts off. My eyes don't see that. I don't see those details. For my body shape, it's a style that does not suit me. You know, I want a sleeve that is slim, that is gonna follow the shape of my arm. Especially if it's a short one, when I put my arms down, if I have extra flounces right at the height of my bust, it's just gonna widen my appearance, you know, horizontally. When someone looks at me, they're just gonna see all the ruffles here, all the flounces, and it's just gonna make my upper chest look wider. And that is something that's gonna happen very commonly if you have a larger bust. I don't have the largest bust in the world. I am a C cup, but I do have a bust and I try to just stay with nice clean lines, less on the top, less is more in my opinion. So those little flounces that come in this pattern, I did not print them out, I am not sewing them, you know? But I think it could suit someone with different body shape, rectangle. Those flounces are really feminine and could add a lot of femininity to a body that doesn't have that many curves. Also a pear shape to add some volume on the upper body to balance out the volume that a pear shape has on the bottom half with the larger hips. So something to think about. These things are ingrained in my head and you know, even though I would see a blouse like that in a shop, in a hangar with all those flounces, I think, oh, look how pretty, look how feminine. I know it's a style that is not going to suit me and I won't even try it on, much less sew it, you know. <laughs> Plus those flounces are super fabric hungry. 
Okay, enough about flounces. You see and they have separate pattern pieces. They have a different arm side, a normal arm side with a normal setting sleeve. The neckline is rounded and higher and then there's a, like a keyhole shape and the ties come up from here and finish right there on the top. You can tie it up quite up here but there's that little keyhole that still shows a bit of the skin on the chest and I like that and then you de adds a flounce to the normal setting sleeve so I think you've already got it clear that I'm looking at views A and views C which are the normal ones with no flounces I have chosen chiffon for both of the versions I've made the black chiffon you're going to see throughout up close and so personal is a black chiffon with velvety dots that was kindly sent to me for Christmas all the way from the UK from Anna from You Got Me In Stitches she also has a YouTube channel and it's a beautiful beautiful fabric and just perfect for this little black dress that I wanted to have the crinkle chiffon has brown and beige print that sort of looks a bit zebra a bit tigerish I'm not sure and it's a very precious fabric for me not because the fabric is precious it's just a crinkle chiffon but because it's old, I've got it since maybe 2011 and it's part of my dwindling stash that I've traveled with all the way from New Zealand or you know and I've carried around all these countries I've been living in <laughs> and I bought this one in a shop called Spotlight. It's a big shop that is present in Australia and New Zealand and I've been carrying that crinkle chiffon and I finally made something out of it. Now I mentioned dresses because these are blouses right but I have made them into dresses because I had enough fabric and I wanted dresses and they, they turned out to be like shift style dresses this pattern comes from sizes 6 to 22 my body measurements put me in a size 20 but as always you know I go quite in depth at the measurements of the actual pattern that I found on the pattern like you can't find that on the envelope or on the PDF file that I am looking at so in Up Close and So Personal, you're going to see how I chose my size. You're going to see a lot of sewing construction, mainly based on the necklines. Because otherwise, these are really simple patterns. They have shoulder seams, they have side seams, and then all the special interest is on these different necklines. So I'm going to be showing you aspects of both. Very interesting, I hadn't put ties in, these types of ties in, in this manner. I have made a load of patterns that use neckties that are sewn on in a way that I find much more difficult than this. So I really enjoyed this one. I think it's way easier than other patterns with neckties and I think that's really cool and I think you're going to enjoy watching. So let's hop into Up Close and Sew Personal. are the two front pieces for the different views this pattern has this one is for a and b the one that has just like a drop shoulder type sleeve and that is for view c and d the one that has the normal type arm side for a normal sleeve dropped at both that so that's done i'm going to close up a little bit on the finished garment measurements so you can see why i chose the size that i chose and the ease that's going to result from that which might be a bit less ease than was intended because I have sized one size down from what the pattern recommends according to my body measurements here I have a close-up of the pattern pieces for both views I'm making both and I've got the two fronts there now my bust is of 42 that places me in a size 20 on the little numbers there you can see that a size 20 is going to give me four and a half inches of positive ease the finished garment measurements finish at 46 and a half so that's how I know and size 18 finish at 44 and a half and that would give me 2.5 inches of positive ease around the bust and I'm more comfortable with 2.5 inches of positive ease at the bust than 4.5 now at the waist you can see below the waistline below the shorten and lengthen line there are also little numbers there that I have blown up so you can see my waist is a 34 and a half, which would also place me in a size 20. The waist for a size 20 is actually 34, but half an inch is not really that much of a difference in a more loose style like this is. So the waist of size 20 finishes at 46 inches. That would give me 11 and a half inches of positive ease at the waist, which is a lot. And for size 18, that's nine and a half. It's still a lot, but it is a relaxed 
So I'm very comfortable with sewing up a straight size 18 based on the positive ease I'll have at the bust and the waist. I really want to make this blouse into a dress so I've got the selvages there in the middle so I folded that way and then folded that way so I can have both of these on the fold and so just from the hems here of the blouse I've added 13 and a half inches or 35 centimeters there. It's a pretty straight hem so I just measured and kept the same shape there and I've done the same with the other one that's the front added that amount so I'm not adding paper to the pattern pieces I'm just modifying this on the fabric as such from there I'm just gonna come out tiny tiny bit maybe three eighths of an inch further out to make it slightly a-lined but I'm not giving it extra space around here much just a little bit to keep the shape going there this is the top part of view A and B the one that has a deeper V neckline and you can see a dot right there for each of the sizes. I have marked that dot onto my fabric and that is an important reference for the pattern that needs to be marked. There is something similar on the neckline of views C and D. In this one, the neckline is higher. You can see it's rounded there, it's not a V. The triangle mark, not the circle. That is the important reference that is sort of the same to the one that's marked over there. The construction of the ties will be pretty much the same. The only thing that changes is the shape of the neckline and up to where the ties reach. In this case, up higher, in that place, closer to the center there. This is view A that I'm making, the one that has a drop shoulder. You can see the wider shoulder there. At this point, the shoulder seams have been sewn and surged and over there, you can't see, but the bust studs have been sewn the neckline has been stay stitched. This is very difficult to see. There are dots there on each side. There's a dot there and a dot over on the other side and those have been marked with a yellow pen. Now the instructions said to stay stitch from the dot around the back and then towards the other dot. It didn't mention stay stitching down towards the v-neckline. So the V neckline goes down there lower. I have stay stitched the whole thing. I think it's important. I don't want this to distort. And I'm working with crinkle chiffon. So more the reason to stay stitch this neckline. Here you can see the top part of UC, the one with the higher neckline. I'm using black fabric. I have also sewn the shoulder seams, the bust studs. Stay stitch the whole neckline and I'll show you the top of the neckline. You can see I've marked with chalk the center front of the top, that's going to be super important. And then you see a dot there and a dot there, similar to the view I have just shown you. That is important because that's where the ties are going to be sewn up to. So that dot and that dot needs to be marked really accurately onto the fabric there. The difference with the other one I've just shown you was that it was a deep V neckline. And so the dot looked like it was further above. This is a round neckline, but don't worry, you can get your head in there because the facing is going to give you an opening here later that will widen this and allow your head to get in. These are the pattern pieces for both of the ties. You can see they're different in shape and in width. The bottom wider and longer one is for views A and B, the one that has the V neckline, the lower neckline. You can see the grain line mark, it means it's cut on the bias. I really tried to do that, but that is super fabric hungry and what for really? <laughs> I cut them on the straight of green, so it doesn't really make a difference. This other tie that is narrower and shorter is cut on the normal grain line. So why? Like why? This one is narrower and shorter. They both have center back seams there. Now on my case, I don't have center back seams on any of them because to complete the length here, I had to extend this with another piece. I'm gonna have two seams in other places. And that one, I actually just cut it shorter so that would, it, I could cut it on the fold. So I'm gonna mark my center backs with chalk marks across and that will signify center back seams because I'm not doing center back seams on mine. I just didn't have the fabric for it. Both of these ties, you know, coming from the center back in, are gonna have notches, circles and marks that need to be marked accurately. But what I've done here is just taken the long tie and folded it right sides together. So wrong side of the fabric is showing there. 
At the center here, I have marked my tie with chalk. You can see the yellow mark there that I have marked with chalk. Now, the pattern has a center back seam there. So instead of that chalk mark there, there should be a seam that has been pressed open. But because I cut my ties differently, I even have an extra seam there and an extra seam there so I could complete the length as much as possible. Just pretend it's just one whole tie that has been cut correctly and that there is a center back seam. In this case, I don't have a center back seam, but that line that I marked with yellow would be the reference to the center back of the blouse. So we had two dots on the neckline of view A and we have dots on the ties as well. So you have a dot there and towards the other side you have a dot right there. I have gone ahead and hand basted this because the fabric is really slippery. So from the dot there, all the way down there, pivoting and then to the tip and the same for the other extreme of the tie. So this is the other side of the tie from that dot, basted all the way there and then down to there. And that needs to be sewn regular straight stitch and then turned right sides out and there's going to be a center area where it's raw and it hasn't been turned. This is the necktie for view C and D. It's narrower and shorter. Similar to what I did with the other tie, I have a line to signify the center back there because I cut this on the fold. So you can see the chalk line there marking the back. Originally there would be a seam there, so if you're making the pattern as per instructions, you will have a center back seam. It's just that I don't have one. You can clearly see the yellow dots there. One there, one there, it's much easier to see on the black fabric, of course. And I've done the same thing as I did with the other one, which was based from the dot all the way to the extremes of the tie on both sides. So that's the other side, and then you will have a raw area in between that hasn't been sewn. see the dot there and that I've sewn right up to there and now I'm going to find the next dot there's going to be a large row area here there is my center back you would have a seam there if you're sewing this as per the original pattern there is my next dot and that is where I'm going to start Now this bit here where the dot is, it's important it was marked accurately so I have done that and you need to snip into that. It's nerve wracking to snip into fabric in my opinion <laughs> but it's necessary. I've done an extra step due to my choice of fabric and before turning these right sides out I have gone and trimmed and surged the edges to protect them. Even though this is going to be on the inside with wear and everything, you know, there would be fraying in there with, if I left the raw edges there. Depends on the type of fabric you're working with, whether you want to do this extra step or not. I wanted to do it and you can see where I snipped. That's where I started surging and all the way to the other end and the same on the other side. These are the both ties turned right sides out and pressed. And you can see where I snipped into the dots there. That area is still raw. And this is the area that I'm going to pin to the neckline, matching the notches on both sides. So that is the one for this version and this one also has the seam allowances there. Raw, you can see this one's shorter, this one looks longer. So that's the next step. This is the facing piece for view C and D as you can see. and. It's a funny type facing and there is a center there, center front, that line. I have marked that line onto the front of my top because I want to be able to align that when I put this all together. The neckline of view C and D looks really high but when this facing is put on there and then the stitch line is done there and then trimmed away, you can have like a keyhole opening that will make the neckline larger. And this does need to be centered. So I have marked that center onto the facing and onto my top so I can align them properly. This is version C, the one with the higher neckline here. And I have put my raw areas there from my tie. You can see where that was clipped into there. And that matches exactly the notch mark that was there on the pattern right there and on the other side, right there, those little yellow marks that you can see. So it matches there and then it goes all the way around 
the edge of the neckline. Centre back I marked with yellow here. And on the tie, remember there was supposed to be a back seam there? In my case there isn't, but I have marked a line to signify that there's a back seam, so pretend there is one. And now this needs to be sewn with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but I'm going to sew it with half an inch seam allowance. Because I'm going to go and sew on top of this again when I sew the facings on. So I don't want those two seams to meet each other. I'm starting near the center front of this neckline. I did draw a little line right there that you might see. And this one starts a little beyond there. And I'm sewing at half an inch seam allowance, not at 5 eighths. Okay, this looks absolutely crazy right now. I have the shoulder seams right there and everything opened up over the pressing board. And all this that you see around here is the neckline. Now, you've just seen me sew the tie at a half an inch seam allowance and that's what's there. And then on top of that, right sides together, I've got the facings. The facings are sewn right there, the back one to the front one, you know, the shoulder seams and those match the shoulder seams of the top, it's under there and then they match all the way around up to there you can see those notches on the facing match the ones that I used to sew on the tie so the tie is right there in between, sandwiched in between the facing and the top, same as there and now the facing has some drawings on there that you're supposed to mark I've marked mine with tracing paper, that yellow bit right there and remember I told you I'd mark the center front on the facing and on the top right there. I was really careful to have those lines match so that I don't have a crooked facing. So I'm just going to finish pinning down there. And you better believe that I'm going to be hand basting this. I am not going to trust that these pins are going to hold everything in place. Basically when I get to there, that line there, that's where you pivot and then you start going down like that and that will form a keyhole opening if you haven't noticed I've been batch making these like following the same steps with both at the same time and I have hand basted both facings onto both necklines after the tie is already there now on this one the ties come up higher you know around there so that's there and the facing is just put right on top right sides together with the neckline there and sandwiching that part that has the tie. And this one you've already seen, this is different because it'll be a round neckline and here I need to pivot and go down there and like that. So his seam allowances are huge, 5 eighths of an inch for these types of curved seams are really harder to do without getting pockets. So I'm going to be touching and going really slowly and just sewing these two necklines, then trimming that seam allowance, clipping and the stitching.
Okay, so the keyhole area has been understitched there. So that's going to keep the facing inside very neatly like that. This is the tie right there. That's the facing and the seam allowance is towards the facing. I'm going to show you view A that I made first and this is my crinkle chiffon from New Zealand from Spotlight that is precious to me as a sentimental value really because anything that I still have from New Zealand that fabric I just can't cut into it for some reason and I was able to do that with this one so that's good <laughs> you can see the deep V neckline there you would have seen more practical things in the video and the ties that come up from up higher so from the shoulder seam further onto the neckline upper chest the ties come out from there and a sandwich between the main blouse and the facing that is inside really clean and simpler way to put on these neckties and I really enjoyed doing that I cheated with these ties because they were meant to be cut on the bias the pattern piece is very wide and very long and it would have taken up so much fabric it would have been irresponsible of me to do that and actually with the amount of fabric I had if I placed those pattern pieces on the bias I wouldn't have even been able to get a blouse like the short original version by placing them on the normal grain line and piecing them and that you can't see because it's a busy print I was able to get a dress you know so doing these little tricks it's not wrong it's not wrong I've made so so many patterns with neckties that are cut on the grain line so why should this one be on the bias you know it doesn't have to be now if you have a lot of fabric and you want to cut it on the bias go ahead I'm sure this would gonna fall nicely and like be more like flexible I don't know but it's not worth using up all that fabric in my opinion <laughs> I would usually wear it with a tie just low I probably would never like do a bow I'm, I'm not a huge fan of like the, the proper bow I like the tie just hanging like that I think it's really pretty these side bust starts are angled and I did have to lower them by one and a half inches very common adjustment and I'm knowing now that for buttery macaws that sort of pattern that is the amount I have to lower them in other patterns I have to lower half an inch in others an inch it just depends and always assess that before sewing it makes a huge difference to the fit and these darts are fitting me correctly at the height of my bust not the higher apex that you know <laughs> this was drafted for these sleeves are drop shoulder and they do have a shape they do have a curve there I'm not a fan of hemming that normally of surging and folding up and hemming it's gonna give you pockets it's just not a good look I would never do it so I do bias binding and it's the same technique I would use to do any bias binding on any arm side you know the same I have a video on the channel showing how to do that and I didn't have enough left of this fabric to make my own bias binding so I just used brown satin one and it worked just fine this is the inside you can see the facings in there I have hand tacked them down to the shoulder seams and you can see the facing there and the tie comes out of it so it's very interesting to sew I love this dress how it turned out it's more simple it's not those flashy colors that I usually like to wear is more toned down more serious in my opinion but still totally my style so have a look at how it fits and how it looks on
This is my little black dress. You can see how totally sheer it is. It's a chiffon with velvety dots. Very, very beautiful fabric. As soon as I saw the fabric when I opened Anna's gift, I was, ah, oh, I was so happy and I knew what I wanted to make with it. And I have done the normal setting sleeve, short sleeves, not hard to easy in, you know, they didn't draft a huge amount of ease, you know, that you have to gather in there. So that was good. And the neckline you can see is different. It's like around the neckline up high and the ties come out of there. And then that is the keyhole that you saw me cutting out from the facing and everything. Now the way they made the facing that you saw at first and then you cut out, I think is brilliant because it keeps all this area super stable without it distorting. Block fusing pieces of fabric and then cutting out the facings is a must. This is going to distort like no other fabric if you cut them separately and then try to fuse them back on. So I highly suggest block fusing for these types of fabrics and for most, for all of them actually. It's just much more practical. The ties, I made them slightly shorter. I don't have a center back seam on my tie. I put it on the fold in the way that it was going to fit on my fabric. And you saw that and how I made all this beautiful neckline here that I absolutely love. I think the ties are still appropriate. As I said, I don't really want to make a bow up here. I just want to do a tie and this length is okay. Here you can actually see the dart, how it's angled. You couldn't see it with the other one because the print was so busy. I'm not going to turn this one inside out because you can just see it all, can't you? <laughs> Look, I know the video or any pictures I take of this dress are not going to do it justice and I'm not going to be able to describe or portray the way I feel in this dress when I walk. I walked around looking down at those little velvety dots. It just, oh, it's just amazing. And I know you're gonna notice that the slip I'm wearing underneath is a little bit short. I need to make myself one that's a bit longer. I've had this slip for so long, years and years and years, and I need to make one that is maybe three inches a bit longer because when fabrics are as sheer as this, you can really tell that it's a short slip. <laughs> So for you ladies that join me on the saffron and orchid tears there is an extra exclusive video about this make there on the page for you so go and check it out i'm going to try to increase slightly the frequency of videos for you while we're in this period of quarantine and social distancing i hope i can provide you with some sewing entertainment and isn't it great that we have an activity that we can do indoors that we love that is productive and can keep our minds busy while we look after ourselves and our families inside our homes. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on Friday. Bye.